This video covers the fundamentals of CSS. The structure of this video is as follows. What CSS is, what CSS looks like, a brief history of CSS, the structure of CSS within an HTML document, the syntax of CSS, and the summary. All right, let's get started. What is CSS? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. CSS is a simple method for adding style, font, color, spacing, etc. to HTML documents. CSS allows you to describe how the document is represented on the screen and or when it is printed. If you think of HTML as describing the structure of the document, you can think of CSS as describing the look of the document. In computer science, this is referred to as separation of concerns. Separation of concerns is a design principle for separating a computer program into distinct sections, such that each section addresses a separate concern. In the case of CSS, you can have one CSS document that defines the overall look and feel of a whole website of HTML documents. What CSS looks like. CSS can look like this. As you can see, the lines of CSS can define the color, font size, font style, link color, etc. for each specific structural HTML element. In this case, the HTML background will be white. The body of the HTML document will use a font that is 18 pixels tall, uses the font type Lucida Grande, and is colored black and all the links will have a color blue. Brief history of CSS. Before, we covered that HTML was formally published in June 1993. In April 1994, HTML 2.0 added IMG, the image tag. HTML 3.0 introduced the concept of a table. This HTML table concept was meant only for the presentation of tabular data. However, People quickly realized that by placing images and text inside of various data cells, they could control the layout of the page. In May 1996, HTML 3.2 made it possible to set fonts, colors, place backgrounds behind the text content, and many other presentational methods. As this presentational layer was being developed, web browsers went from being text only to supporting the next HTML tags that were being developed. Unfortunately, most of the web browsers developed their own tags and accessibility. Luckily, W3C stepped in and in December 1996, they released the CSS1 level specification. This specification started the process of separating display from content. Today, the latest CSS specification people are working on is called CSS3. The structure of CSS within an HTML document. CSS styling can be applied by the browser defaults, an external style sheet, an internal style sheet, and or inline styling. Browser defaults are the most basic defaults as they are the defaults your browser uses on every web page you view. External style sheets are the style sheets that are referenced by a link within the head portion of the HTML document. Internal style sheets are the style sheets found and written out within the actual head portion of the HTML document. CSS styling can be applied inline style, that is, inside of a particular HTML element. Lastly, JavaScript can also be used to define, change, and remove CSS styling from an HTML element. Ignoring the JavaScript for now, the order of cascade in cascading style sheets is as follows. Browser default, external style sheet, internal style sheet, inline style. This means that the inline style will override the internal style sheet, which will override the external style sheet, which overrides the browser defaults, which is why and how we think of CSS as being in a cascade. The syntax of CSS. CSS statements will often look like the following. The first part of the statement is called the selector. The selectors, li, hashtag first underscore text, dot footer underscore text, are patterns used to select the elements you want to style. 
The second part of the statement is what is enclosed within the curly brackets or braces for those of you in the UK. The enclosed part specifically defines how the element or elements selected will be styled. You may notice that some of the selectors have a period in front of them, some have a hash mark or number sign in front of them, and some have nothing. A hash mark signifies that you are selecting a particular HTML element, while a period signifies that you are selecting several HTML elements. In HTML, the ID attribute provides a document-wide unique identifier for an element. So there is only one element that fits this selector. In HTML, the class attribute provides a way of classifying similar elements. So there can be many elements that fit this selector. Looking at this table, we can see the various ways that CSS selectors can be written. Dot class selects all the elements with the particular class name. Hashmark ID selects the elements with the particular ID. The CSS document can get very large when you start writing selectors for specific elements inside of other elements or conjunctions of elements. You can see all the different ways to select various elements within elements in this table. Summary. In this video, you have learned what CSS is, what CSS looks like, a brief history of CSS, the structure of CSS within an HTML document, and the syntax of CSS.